Well, as we promised, I'm back with Paolo, Paolo Trissi, and we're going to go for, if you like, a trip up the implant body and discuss implant body designs, the macro configuration, the macro geometry of them, and give you some perception on how the research substantiates what we're doing or does it substantiate what we're doing. So, Paolo, just go ahead and try and explain it to me if you can. Okay, I'll do my best to give some answer, if there are, to the topics of the geometry of the implant, threads, design, implant neck, and connections. These are very hot topic today because many implant companies are producing and selling implants with different shapes, with different thread design, and so on, but they truly don't understand why they, why we have this kind of different uh, shapes and morphology of the implants, and for us it's difficult to choose. For any one of us, it's difficult us, to yes. choose. Yes, and to have uh, the meaning of these different components. As for me too, so what I try to do now is to put together what some of the information we have based on scientific knowledge or based on the common sense if we do not have scientific knowledge right. and trying to uh, give you an overview of what we have. So if we take an implant we can understand that there are different parts of the implant, different components and the f starting from up to down the first part and is the connection interface for the abutment. <coughs> this part, as we will see later, is very important for transferring the load from the prosthetics to the, to the implant, as well as uh, it is an interface between the oral cavity and the bone where we can have leakage of bacteria down to the bone and this can be harmful to the bone and to the osseointegration integration of the implant. Then we have the neck, and the neck of the implant is also very important from a biomechanical point of view, because this part is the one that goes into the bone, and this is the weakest part of the bone and the implants. So it's very important that the uh, design of the neck can introduce some concept of how to preserve the bone at the crest. And the, the main part of the implant is the body, and the body can be straight or taper, whatever you can see on the market. And uh, this is responsible for transferring the major part of the load to the bone. And then the apex is also very important for the placement of the implant. Now just try to focus on these different aspects of the implant morphology. And starting from the first step of the implant placement, that is the surgery. When we take the implant out from the box and we put the implant into the mouth. And let's see how the components and the different geometry of the implant can affect this step of the implant placement. So if we choose, for example, a taper implant or a parallel implant, does it make any difference? Of course it is. Because when you prepare a conical shape into the bone, then at least half of the implant goes down right. without threads. You just put it in the hole, and the larger part of the hole Clean. allows to the implant to go down at least for half. So it's faster at least. And uh, if you have large threads, like here for example, large threads, threads pitch, uh, as compared to these cylindrical implants, this can make a difference in terms of uh, uh, speed of placement. Look, we're not loading down. Why? Oh, there it comes. It's just slow. Yeah. That made me go. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> just keep going on that slide. Okay. And uh, this having a large thread pitch speed up the implant placement. Uh, also the thread shapes can make a difference. For example, if you have a sharp threads or a rounded threads or a square threads, for example, right. it's much easier to 
put down an implant with a sharp thread. Right. And uh, so we can select the implant based on, for example, the speed of placement. If we are in a hurry in our office and we have to place, for example, 50 implants per day, could be useful could be to have. <laughs> no, you don't think about it. <laughs> but sometimes can be if you are yes. if you take your time and you don't need to be to to speed and your patients are calm, then you can select whatever implants you you want. Doesn't matter about the time and also parallel implants with small thread pitch can be can work very well. Now. Next part of the implant uh, geometry focus on the primary stability. Right. Yeah. When you place your implant, the implant is sit seated into the bone. Then you can choose if you want to go for immediate loading. It's better if you plan this before, of course. Right. But once your implant is in place and you you can choose to go for immediate loading or delayed loading, then you have to understand that primary stability it's one of the most important topics because if the implant is not stable enough you can lose the implant under immediate loading so primary stability is a key factor for immediate loading so how can the geometry of the implant uh, affect the primary stability of course primary stability is uh, related to many different topics such as density of the bone surgical technique insertion torque and so on and we can measure the mic primary stability by measuring the micro motion after placement that is not feasible in the mouth of the patient this can be done in a setup in vitro laboratory right. of course or you can measure the primary histologic bone connection under the microscope but you need of course um, studies when research the micro motion is that that uh, implant stability quotient Nothing to do with no. the, with the no because the Ostel machine you're right. saying isn't it correct is relate is is an indirect measurement right of the micro motion it's so not direct measurement so this is a direct motion M micro motion we measure in our laboratory directly with using a mechanical machine that right. gives you a, s a direct measurements of the micro mobility of the implant under different loading of course. So we have to understand that micromotion is also related to the bone density, of course. If the implant is placed in a bone like this, where you have right. a low density bone, or the, when you have a high and strong compact bone at the cortical level, immediately after placement, if you do a right preparation of the bone site, you can achieve a very strong immediate connection to the per-implant bone. That is almost equivalent to osseointegration. What's the difference here? Except it's physical at this stage. Of course. The difference is that the bone must heal. Right. So you are at risk of losing this kind of connection during the healing process. That's why we must be very careful when immediately loading the implant. You must know what you are doing. But if you are able to preserve this kind of connection, the implant is perfectly stable. Such as an implant that has healed for three to four months, exactly. And this picture shows you histologically and with micro CT how much connection you can have immediately after placement. These were taken, where these histologic slides were taken from implants not healed, just placed into the bone and sectioned. So you're looking at a bone implant interface. Yes, now this is percentage. what you. Yes. But if you go in a bone like this, for example, in the upper maxilla, in the upper jaw, in the maxilla, then this is what you can get. The bone is very, you know, porous. Right. And the trabecular, and here you can look at the trabecular under the microscope, so these are magnified. But if you look this in the reality, they are very thin and very brittle. Very friable, right. Yes, and loading with the with the occlusal load the mm -hmm. range of occlusion is very high can be very high and can be disruptive for this kind of bone if so you really are, your bone implant contact is remarkably yeah, small of course and and the, the mechanical 
connection here is very nothing. Nothing. So you must first of all make a good treatment planning, understanding what's the bone density before going to the surgery. And it's also very important to have a good communication with the patient so that he knows what you are doing, where you are working, what's the bone level that you are working on, and that what you can do is related most to the anatomy and the biology than on your skills. Right. That's if you have a good communication with the patient, he can easily understand what you can and what you cannot do for him. So looking at the, at the primary stability side, what we can do is that measuring the primary stability for different implant geometry. Right. Yeah, and this is what we set up in our laboratory, a study like this, where we compare three different implant geometry in different bone qualities, and of course using different insertion torque. We were interested in looking at the different primary stability, and we compared these three implant design, a geometric parallel wall, right. small thread pitch, and then a taper screw went with small pitch, and then a, a, a taper implant with large pitch. Right. Yeah. And these are the results. They are quite. Uh, <laughs> different. <laughs> different if you if you look at the if you look at the this side where you can see the yellow line here which represent uh, the cylinders right and you can see how the curve stops here this means that we were not able to achieve more than 120 newtons right. insertion torque in dense cortical bone. This graph represents dense cortical bone. And the other lines represent the taper implants. The red and the blue line represent the, uh, the taper implant, and both of them were able to achieve up to 200 newton insertion torque. It is very high. Much different. And uh, the micro motion of these two implants is much lower, around 10 microns. And uh, can I have? Okay. Oh, yes. 10 microns micro motion is almost nothing, right. because as you know, the threshold level for micro motion under immediate loading is 50 microns. Right. So if you are able to achieve at least, I would say, 100 newton, 120 newton, and be below 20 microns right. of micro motion can be safe for the implant immediately loaded. On the cylinders, parallel wall screw, we were able to get 30 microns of micro motion in our upper higher level of insertion right. torque. But if we ship, shift to T D2 bone with one millimeter cortical crest, everything is different, of course because the amount of insertion torque we were able to achieve was lower. For cylinders were as, as high as 70 newton right. uh, centimeter insertion torque. And for um, tapering implants, we were able to go up to 125, right, let's right, say. 130. And the micro motion, of course, was different between the two sides, between the two different implants. So. The conclusion for this study is that, of course, using uh, taper implants can give us a better primary stability in both different sites, different bone sites, soft and dense bone. So if you're looking for immediate loading, it's better to choose a taper. Yeah, taper implants and to go high insertion torque level to achieve the best primary stability. And, and the reason for that is, is the tapering is, is inducing lateral stress yes. as it goes in engaging yes. more aggressively. Yes. But if so you it's really physical property. Yes, mechanical. If you use cylinders, when they come to the stop, to the bottom oh, right. end of the preparation, and you try to screw it more, then you, lose the, yes, then you lose the threads preparation into the bone, and you lose the stability.